All right, I got to get this out of my way because I have got to move on. I am stuck on Saturday. I got to tell you, it's no way to live life. I'm stuck on Oliveira. Now, I'm learning something about myself because I was in 100% support of Oliveira. I was going to scream from the rooftops. Who weighed him in? Where's that person? Where's his certification? Where's his eye test? This is hearsay. We're taking somebody else's word that he weighed 155.5 pounds. Nobody zoomed in on that scale. Nobody has a picture. Nobody has any kind of proof. I'm going to go on and on. You show me the bylaws. You show me the statute that anybody has the right to strip this guy. That's the stance that I'm going to take. That's the stance I started to take. Tell all of you guys did. You guys all caved. I mean, I got to tell you, there is nothing in America more important than success. And if you're winning, apparently, to hell with the rest of it. That was the side I was ready to be on until y'all leaped the fence and went over there and started talking about, well, the scale was off and all the other fighters said, none of the other fighters missed weight. You've got, you've got the whole story so backward, but you've chosen to believe what you want to believe because there was a performance and there was a victor and you're front runners. All right, great. I'm going to play along. I saw what you guys saw. I saw a goddamn good fighter. Apparently, he's a welterweight that we're going to just choose to call a lightweight. Either way, I saw something special. You guys saw that too. But if we're going to break this down moving forward, because one of the things that has irritated me, in all fairness, wasn't only how quickly you guys jumped from, oh my gosh, how could he miss weight? This is a, oh, forget the whole thing and give him the belt back. Not, not only that, was that a little bit of a turnoff. I don't love the way Justin Gaethje's been swept out of the way. This exact scenario just happened. It was called Figueredo versus Benavides. The exact same thing just happened. Now, do we look at that as precedence for what we're going to do again? Or do we look at that and choose to learn from it because we thought it was a mistake? I don't know the answer to that. But that would be the very first fight that somebody would have to, a reasonable person, would look back on for what we do from here. Because here's where we currently stand, okay? The guy who missed weight was stripped of his title and was fined by the Athletic Commission, is now the number one contender and is sitting in a main event world championship spot. He's sitting there. Now, if it wasn't a botched weigh-in, thus scratching the title that was up for grabs, if that's not what it was, then it became a number one contender's match. There has never been a number one contender's match in history where the victor lost at the scale and still got the opportunity. However, there is eight times in history, just off the top of my head, where that exact scenario happened, and he did not get the opportunity that was promised because he didn't beat the scale. That has happened eight times. Now, the other side of the coin. So we've got one half of the bracket filled by a guy who lost the day before the scale. I believe if I was to bet, his opponent is going to be somebody that didn't have to fight at all. I believe Islam, without having any kind of a fight whatsoever, is going to meet him there. I have no problem with it. It's a really great fight. But there is no wordsmith in the world that could pick apart what I just said. One half of the fight will be a guy that lost to a scale last week. The other half of the fight will be a guy that didn't fight at all. This isn't a riddle. This isn't meant to confuse you. It's an interesting position. Particularly when you look at Justin Gaethje, who did go fight. Who did follow the rules? Who did, on 24 hours prior to bell time, get notified that he is no longer fighting the champion? Does it change things? Am I grasping at straws? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But I'm not making things up, whether I'm grasping or not. I'm not putting a little tone on it. I am telling you exactly what happened. 
what I project and you would agree with me to the point that not only do you agree with me that it's what's going to happen, it's what you're asking. You, the audience, are asking to happen is that the next world title fight is going to be between a guy who just lost to the scale versus a guy who didn't fight at all. That's what you're asking for. I think you're going to get it. I think you're going to get your way. But this is just as confusing as trying to explain to somebody that Colby Covington was the interim champion, never lost, and woke up one day and was no longer the champion. It's just as confusing as trying to tell somebody that Colby Covington just beat the VMF champion but never became the VMF champion. Like, I'm not trying to do a riddle. I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm telling you specifically what happened. And moreover, what you're lobbying, you are lobbying and asking to have happened.